Linny is a 5-star pyro DPS in a sea of pyro DPSs. Despite that, he's only one of the 3 pyro bow users and one of the only 2 pyro charge attack bow characters. Despite that, he plays vastly different from Ember. Charging his bow to level 2 allows him to deal extra damage with his Grin Makin hat and getting up to 5 prop surplus stacks after losing HP from the charge attack usage and then using his skill will allow him to deal the most pyro damage and also heal himself in the process. Even though Lenny fits better in a mono pyro team due to his passive, he's an incredible force to be reckoned with, especially in the right team setup. As Lenny will be getting his rerun in 4.6 together with Alakino, Wanderer and Paitu, should you even get him? Let me first share about his teams, build, his pros and cons, and finally my own personal opinion to get him or not, especially over the other Pyro DPS, Alakino. For Linny's teams, I have 3 recommendations. The first team capitalizes on his passive to increase his Pyro damage bonus. Pairing him with Deya, Bennett, and Kazuha will allow the team to have 3 Pyro characters to obtain the highest buff possible. Deya will also provide the resistance to interruption while he charges his bow, while Bennett will buff his attack and heal him so that he can generate more of the prop surplus stacks. Kazuha, Sucrose, or Lynette can reduce the enemy's pyro resistance to allow him to deal even more damage. The second team provides better survivability by switching out Deya with Zhongli. Despite Zhongli being of the Geo element, which prevents Linny from getting his full passive buff, Zhongli's shield helps to increase Linny's resistance to interruption and also from taking damage, even more so than Deya, thereby ensuring that Linny can deal more damage over time. What's more, Zhongli's shield also reduces the enemy's resistance by 20%, which further helps to increase Linny's overall damage. The final team focuses solely on damage. This time, we'll swap out Zhongli for Furina instead. While Linny no longer gets any resistance to interruption, Furina's primary function will be to further buff Linny's damage with an elemental burst and also heal him with an elemental skill using the Singers of All Waters so that Linny's HP will be high enough to constantly gain the prop surplus stacks. Personally, I prefer the second team with Zhongli as the survivability is better to make his on-field presence more comfortable. Moving on for his builds, I'm using the Thundering Pulse on him just for the crit damage, but of course his signature 5-star weapon is the best. Otherwise, the Battle Bus crit weapons and the Black Cliff Bow will work well for him too. For his artifacts, you can choose to use the Marichase Hunter set so you can focus on his crit damage, or go for the Wanderer's Troop instead to increase his overall charge attack damage. Before we move on to talk about the core of today's video, to discuss about his pros and cons, I would like to say that 94% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. If you're one of them, do consider supporting the channel by hitting the subscribe button to get us to our next goal of 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much! For Lini's pros, firstly, despite being better mono pyro, he can actually deal quite a lot of pyro damage. His passive increases his pyro damage quite significantly when he's paired with pyro teammates. If you pair Linny with Bennett C6, Bennett's burst further increases Linny's pyro damage as in his C6, his burst will also increase pyro damage. Just take a look. Secondly, the fact that he also works with Furina and also Kazuha, despite being better mono pyro, also makes him more versatile and allows you to increase his damage even further. As being in a solely pyro team will reduce the damage if reactions such as Swirl are not present or cannot be activated. <laughs> Thirdly, the fact that he loses HP while using his charge attack allows him to use the Marichase Hunter artifact set, meaning that he can focus more on crit damage and less on crit rate to try to get more damage for himself. Fourth, 
while he's a charge attack bow user, he's not that single target like the other characters, thanks to the fact that his Grim Markin hat will also home in a pyro rocket to deal damage to the same or other enemies in the vicinity. This will increase his overall usability and also help to dispatch enemies a lot quicker. All in all, his pros allow him to increase his damage well to defeat enemies fast. Let me show you how much damage he can actually do. Next, let's move on to Linny's cons. Firstly, Linny's teams are unfortunately limited due to his HP mechanic. Unlike Neuvelet, who is actually self-sustainable as he doesn't really work based on any stacks, Linny is unable to get himself to 5 prop surplus stacks to deal the most damage and heal himself the most without a healer. This is because the maximum number of stacks he can get alone is 3, from his charge attack and burst as the HP loss from his charge attack stops once his HP reaches 60%, which means that he will not gain any more prop surplus stacks afterwards. Secondly, as Linny is a bow charge attack user, it unfortunately leads to three things. One, your attack speed is limited to the charge time of his bow, which is honestly quite slow, thereby reducing your overall damage per second. Two, you need to be accurate with his charge attack to deal damage, which is a huge problem, especially if you're on mobile, which once again will reduce your damage if you miss. Third, it is highly recommended to use a shielder or corrector to give the resistance to interruption as he cannot dodge while charging, which will once again limit his team comms. So, having discussed Linny's pros and cons, should you still pull for him? His damage is indeed high for Pyro DPS, and if you are comfortable with a charge attack bow playstyle, I would say go for him. However, if you are like me, who doesn't really like the charge attack playstyle and finds it too slow and limited, I would advise you to skip him. Honestly, other pyro DPSs such as Hu Tao, Yoimiya, and possibly Alakino are faster with their attacks, a lot more easy to use, and a lot more fun in my opinion. What's more, based on the live stream, Alakino's playstyle seems to be quite similar to Hu Tao's, apart from some changes. So if you do like Hu Tao, you can definitely go for her too. Otherwise, you know, you can always wait till the patch releases to try both Linny and Alakino in the test runs to make a better decision for yourself overall. With that, we've come to the end of today's video. What do you think? Will you be going for Linny? Do let me know down in the comment section below. If you'd like to see which standard banner character is the most worth to build, please click the video on the right. If you would like to see my other Genshin Impact videos, please click the playlist on the left. Once again, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye!